G'day, mate. The hashtag no changes movement was a pretty significant one going into classic World of Warcraft. And I'm sure that there's a lot of us that look back on what we were pushing for uh, two years ago in the lead up to WoW Classic and reflecting on what we've seen in the game since then. And maybe some of us have either changed our position or loosened a little bit on how we felt as back then as to how we feel now. Um, some of us may have, may have stayed the same as well, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I think it's pretty fair to say that, you know, not to, you know, pardon the pun, but the winds of change may have somewhat been blowing through the community. And I see more comments mm-hmm. than not that seem to suggest that some changes might be the way to go for TBC Classic. So what I've done, guys, is I've gathered around an all-star crew of content creators, people that I know, love, and respect, who you've heard on the show before. And so I'm just going to introduce them all real quick. North, how are you, mate? I am fantastic. Glad to be back on again. Especially fantastic now that we're on another Josh podcast. Exactly. Moving into TBC territory. Happy to have you, man. Ale, brother, what's going on? Just trying to stay warm up here in Canada, but uh, doing well. (laughs) Stick by the fire, man. Ale might have to duck out halfway as he's got to go help a friend move, so he's a good egg, but uh, we'll get as much out of him as we can. Now, Def Camp, man, how are you? Howdy. How you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, Really glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure, mate, and it wouldn't be a show with Def Camp if we didn't have his uh, brother riding shotgun. Melderon, how are you? Brighter, brighter. I know. The brother, brother. Doing good, doing good, Josh. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. No worries, man. His brother was a mutter. Okay, mad season, (laughs) mad season, mate. How are you? Uh, A little tired, but that's my default state. But nothing gets the blood pumping like talking about World of Warcraft. (laughs) That's the way, man. That's the way. All right, guys. Well, uh, we were supposed to get Nano and Willie in here as well. Some IRL stuff may have held them up, but if they jump in halfway, don't be surprised. But we'll get started. And guys, look... This one might go on for a little bit because I started writing down notes for this one and it just went on and on and on. And I just knew that as soon as I threw these topics out to you guys, the conversation would flow fast and thick. So I'm just going to, you know, you can all anticipate what I'm going to bring up. And I'm sure that you've probably talked about these on your own respective streams to a certain degree, but we'll try and dive a little bit deeper here. And it'll be fun just to hear the conversations in the back and forth between you guys. As you all know, please feel free to interrupt me, interrupt each other. We're all mates here. So it's all, you know, good vibes back and forth. But here's the first point that I wanted to raise as I pull up my notes one second. All right. So in talking about the changes that we, you know, are discussing with TBC, I just wanted to open up with a feeling behind the community maybe going into the game because we said this going into vanilla. We talked about that spirit of classic, like it was almost some kind of Dickensian entity, you know, visiting you in the night. Ooh, you know, don't (laughs) change me or whatever it is. But I found this really interesting quote from the TBC subreddit that I moderate with Ale. Please, everyone, go and visit it when you can. Uh, This is from user dextrose and i think it sums up really well something that i wanted to get out there and he said i think we all learned the classics about this all about the spirit of the game like you know no group finder things like that but when it comes to things that are a little more meta about the game like faction balance some changes aren't necessarily a bad thing after playing classic what i've determined is that i want the feel of tbc rather than absolute accuracy and someone replied sanctum lol said this i'm 100 percent with you killing rag before sons on your first mc feels wrong killing fancris before it does anything feels wrong killing hygen before the safety dance will feel wrong and that's just the opening stanza i wanted to get out there to set the tone for you guys because ale i'm gonna get you to open up mate considering you're a bit time poor on this one but how do you feel about changes for tbc versus changes for classic and once again trying to restore that feel of tbc rather than absolute accuracy i think what i would want and we've had a lot of time to reflect over you know the history of classic and things that have been changed and things that haven't been changed and issues that have come up maybe things that have been ignored is that like I, I kind of feel like i just want them to make the best version of tbc they can so that pretty much puts me firmly in the changes camp because leading into it we already see a lot of issues are building on the horizon and 
unless they kind of get out in front of things like that, you know, for example, faction balance, uh, botting, which they, for some reason, can't get a lid on, I'm all behind changes to give us like the best version of TBC we can get. How far into that would you say you are, though, right? Are you into the changes for it's like, okay, let's keep the feel as accurate as possible for TBC? Or are you even in the right? Because I, I put myself in the camp of mind bending changes for a lot of people. I would be for the abolition of flying mounts and the addition of just elevators to every spot where you need a flying mount to access 100%, right? Like, like, like would, would you, right? Are you extreme or just like for the feels kind of no changes? I'm actually, I'm, curious, I'm actually pretty extreme. I would, I would be willing for them to do some crazy stuff, to be honest, because Ooh. if, if they're not, if they're not going to able, if they're not able to deal with the bonding situation, like fucking give us the coin or whatever it is. Like if they're unwilling or unable to do it, I'm, I'm behind doing whatever can cut down on botting or, or help that kind of thing. Same thing. I don't really like flying mounts either. So if they were to do something there as well differently, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Are you joining? Are you joining Team Elevator? Is that your official stance here? Is it? Can I get? Can I get word? <laughs> team um, Elevator that, sucks. Get out of here. That's that's pretty crazy. Hey man, elevators in BC are dangerous. I don't know if you guys. Yeah. Know elevators that. in BC are dangerous <laughs> and iconic, right? If they added more elevators, right? Like my experiences on the SSC elevator, right, in Serpent Strike Cavern. Right, uh, legendary. Right, they claimed more deaths than any boss other than Vash <laughs> in my original TBC guild. That elevator, okay? It, it's legendary. I remember it. You know, I remember it from from being a wee young, like nine year old lad. Okay, so 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 if we can repeat that experience in Skedis, at Tempest Keep, in every other place know. that you need a flying mount and remove the flying mounts, right? Those just be elevators to the floating rocks in the Grand, right? Um, and you could die all the time, right? It'll be Elevator City. It'll it'll, 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 it'll be, be a little, right, uh, steam, harsh steampunk. Here, right? Steampunk flying trams. <laughs> I think the people who bitch about flying mounts like, need to fucking bitch about something else. Like, <laughs> so down. many people complain about flying mounts. <laughs> they're part of they're part of the fucking game. I mean, it's here, here's I know, a, here, here, I, I know so it's is so is so is botting. PvP, but well, I mean, come on, like, botting is not an integral part of the game like 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 flying mounts, where it's completely different. Shit. All right, all right, settle settle down, not, settle, down, right, settle not, down, settle down, settle down. It's not integral. We'll get there. We'll get there. It's not integral. Meldron, Meldron, let me throw it over to you and just say, just yeah. as we launch into the specifics, just starting on this really, really generic overall theme of how do you feel about changes in TBC and do you just want the feel and that, you know, tinkering with the numbers is okay by you as long as it feels the same, or do you feel like the numbers should be sacrosanct? It's a hard question to answer. I'm nowhere near, I guess, where North and Ale are. Um, I'm on the other end of the spectrum a little bit because you have to realize that Blizzard, <laughs> Blizzard does not have the either will or capacity to make alterations to the game either because they don't want to they don't have the talent to do so and i don't mean that in a bad way um it's just it, it's it's a legacy game and i don't think they look at it in a way that's going to be uh you know they're going to make changes to it now if they, if they do a classic plus i think they're going to do a non-world buff uh classic plus and maybe a a uh, little bit more armor and hp on bosses that's the stuff you're going to see. You're never going to see them take fly mounts out of the game. You're never going to see them do class balancing. It's just not. It's just not in the realm of reality for me, at all. Well, actually, all right. I, fun fact. Fun fact. If if to paraphrase what they actually said, um, like in 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 sort of the quotes from the uh, staff about TBC, at least from the uh, outward facing portions of Blizzard, they said that they are aware that the community is not nearly as unified, especially now. Uh, with the idea that no changes need to be made to the game, right? That changes need to be made, that, you know, even potentially, I think the implication was that some sweeping changes need to be made. They specifically referenced, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I'll try and go look for the post, flying mounts as as something mm. in that when, when when they were looking at it. So it, 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 right, like they are open to it in a way that didn't exist for Classic. They've been making changes in a way that, right, especially recently into Classic that that really portray a lot of of what they've learned i think so i mean they could they could learn enough right it, it, it's it's it, it would be a little big brain for blizzard but i mean they yeah. could learn enough to remove flying mounts because that will ultimately right like i i have this curse i have this curse it's 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 an existential crisis but it's a great day-to-day -day convenience and that's i've never in the history of my life been wrong i was i was i was hashtag <laughs> oh, all God. the changes 
I was hashtag all the changes from day one, right? I didn't learn anything from class. And people were like, oh, wow, after learning all this stuff from class, I, I, I was cursed with, with foresight. And I knew that changes needed to be made. Changes need to be made now, again, and hopefully they're sweeping. Hopefully Blizzard can learn enough. Hopefully, right, fingers crossed that they completely turn a new leaf. Obviously, though, it's not really within the realm of like that big brain like weighing you down. Uh, wow. A little bit we're smoking there, North. <laughs> Mad season. Go for it, man. What are your thoughts generically on changes coming in TPC? It was actually pretty timely that sh- when I saw your invite to the podcast, because I was actually working on a video just about this, and we uh, discussed a little bit on GMA with uh, Def Jam, mm-hmm. Meldrop, mm-hmm. Argos, and Dune Ding. Um, it's my opinion that in a lot of ways with Classic, and it's it's obvious to see today, um, that the more accurate you recreate the game, the less accurate of an experience you have. And what I mean by that would be things such as the world buff meta. You know, technically back then you could get these world buffs 100%, but did anybody really do it? I'm not sure about you guys, but uh, I didn't see one single guild ever have the knowledge nor the willpower or, you know, to be able to work out the dynamics of setting up multiple accounts and summons and the whole like purging meta and stuff. Um, even researching this, even the best guild at the time, or one of the best at least, Elitist Jerks, led by Ian Hazakostas, they didn't stack world buffs. And his math for like the infamous impossible Cthulhu, they weren't using world buffs. So that's that's one change. You can also point to something that they've hotfixed now, I'm pretty sure. The uh, pool parties for PvP, where people make level 1 characters, get 15 honorable kills, and delete to sort of artificially increase the pool size for the PvP in each server so more people can rank up. Uh, they hot fixed that recently, I think, to remove that. But well, technically back then you could do that, so it's it, technically a no change. But you know, through the advent of pi- private servers for the past decade, um, it's something that's massively changed the gameplay experience. And you know, you could you could list a hundred examples. Multi boxing is another big one, something that didn't happen back then, but technically was still allowed within the the TOS. But now it's very prolific these days. So I would say that. I wouldn't be like super extreme about it. Uh, I'd be more siding with Melderon, but I would I would at least like want to have a discussion, right? I think yeah. that classic a release of classic plus or something, as he stated earlier, like a version without world buffs, a version without multi boxing, and obviously the the level one hot fix is already in the game. But you know stuff like that. I wouldn't like really go as far as removing flying, but I would try to. See, the, the biggest change in experience with the game comes from our increased knowledge back in the day. So I would support changes that combat that increase to knowledge, if that makes any sense. So you've drawn the line in the sand and now you're team weak dick instead of team elevator. Is that, <laughs> is that true? I don't know. Well, it's kind of hard for me as, as well, because I, uh, I played BC pretty casually. So my knowledge about it compared to classic is is much less so it would, it would have to be something like okay we get into the beta and we start seeing the effect mm-hmm. uh before we we move forward with any changes for me personally but that's just due to my uh my less knowledge of the game i guess the thing is like real real, real quick josh it's, it's just like blizzard has this motto you know and it's it's like I, I it's never been written in stone but it's like it's leave no one behind right and that's the part that i that i always go back to how is this affecting the entire player base you know, and if that question is if that question is really hard to answer, then it's probably not going to get changed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like the level Fair one enough. elites, like that. Anybody who's not involved with that, it didn't affect them at all. But for people who are in the PvP scene, it it, re- it recreates a more accurate experience how it was back then because nobody did it. All right, guys. So you've had your your warm ups. You've had your time to stretch. That was the easy question. Now we're going to get into the tough stuff. And um, not that it really matters. You'll hear this from me as we go forward. But you know, my opinion on this is that I'm I'm definitely for some changes. My overarching theme for whatever I say is kind of like I want to break the game just to the point that I don't want someone to have a guide for this game good to go. Like the sweatiest of the sweat lords. I don't want everything mm-hmm. to be worked out that they can go all right, I go do this and I do that and I get, you know, millions of golds and I down bosses in 25 seconds and I know all the tactics and it's all perfect. I want all the guides to be wiped clean so that we can somewhat walk in and go like, oh, fuck, that happens? Oh, wow, that's a surprise. Um, just kind like of surprises. Trap doors, like trap doors, 
in elevators. Exactly Ooh. like that. All right, guys, look, let's get to the specifics. And Def Camp, I might kick off with you, mate, just because uh, I'm not sure if we got to you on that last question. And I want to start with faction balance because this has mm. been the big bad that everyone seems to predict for TBC. Now, Meldron released a video just before the release of Classic, and he warned us like a soothsayer about the problematic world buffs. And I know other people had been talking about it as well. It's not like Meldron was the only one, and he says the same thing but his video was really really pertinent in terms of just being like this is a massive fucking problem and people don't know what's coming i yeah. personally feel like faction balance is going to be something similar to that for tbc in terms of this is the massive issue that people might be slightly underselling coming in and whether or not it's going to lead to an average of you know 80 20 servers leading you know horde side all over the place because i think in classic it's about 60 40 horde maybe i'm wrong on that i think overall that seems to be the feel that i get but it's only going to get worse i think once you get the blood elves in there and, and the paladins on the horde side and everything that's going to do Tell me right. what you feel about the issues with faction balance coming into TBC and what could possibly be done. Yeah, so some of you guys know I play on a server Skyrim, right? It's basically like 97% horde, right, to like 3% alliance. Um, and that's – it's already a huge issue in Classic WoW. And, and with, like you said, Josh, the issue of having, uh, you know, blood offs on the horde side with – you know, their amazing arcane torrent talent, you know, ability and uh, seal of blood not being available on the alliance could be an issue to have uh, even more, you know, big spread like or, or a big enough, you know, difference on the in, in TBC as well. But, you know, my thing is with education, right, because I think a lot of people don't realize uh, the potential that, you know, the alliance actually does have in two racials in PvP, especially. Um, and I think a lot of people see, you know, like see Blood Elves, they see Shiny New Race, they see Arcane Torrent, you know, you get, you know, some some Space Goats on the Alliance and all. But I, I think one of the main issues going into TBC is going to be, you know, the problem with class balance, at, with, with faction balance. And I think what Blizzard is going to have to do is hopefully uh, be able to try to even out the, the score a little bit, whether they do queues uh, on servers whether they do, you know, something to limit the amount of Horde versus Alliance on servers. I think that's going to be something we're going to have to see. Like, you know, when it comes to changes versus no changes, I, I very much, I want to see changes that make the game feel healthier, right? That make the game feel like it should should feel. So whether that's, you know, limiting players uh, on a server to, you know, maybe, you know, no, if it goes more than 70% horde, you know, then there starts being a queue for people on that server, something like that. Um, but like you guys said, you know, one of the limiting factors is time, energy, and money that they put into this game, right? So that's something that hopefully people, if people realize that, you know, like going around this time that, you know, a lot of people want to play Blood Elf, a lot of people want to play, uh, you know, like say a, a Blood Elf Red Paladin or something like that. Um, I'm not for you know, having like seal of blood on the alliance. I, I actually, I kind of like how, you know, it's kind of thematic, like it kind of fits the blood elves to have something like that seal of blood, blood elves, you know what I mean? Um, I'm much more kind of reserved when it comes to the changes, but I do want to see changes that, you know, make the game feel like it should in my eyes, right? Well, so if, I want to see things. Yeah. If I can push you, sorry, just on that one, Def Camp, if I understand where you're coming from in terms of like the Horde has an, an identity if they are the ones that get Seal of Blood and the Alliance don't. In saying that, though, is it the case where you might be a little bit, bit okay with Seal of Blood being being nerfed to make it a bit more so that Red Paladins either side are balanced or like where do you draw the line? Yeah, I mean, I mean that's that's okay. I would say, yeah, I would say that would be okay. I mean, something like that, you know, where Seal of Blood gets nerfed a little bit. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, it's a, there's a there's a lot a lot of people that play Red, Red Paladin on Alliance are pretty sour about it, right? Because in PVE, Seal of Blood is just especially when you're when you're seal swapping, right? If you're going from Seal of Blood from Seal a uh, Command to Seal of Blood, it, you, the explosive damage you can do is pretty pretty fucking yeah. Or even high. perhaps, so perhaps the alternative yeah, yeah, is, you know. is sorry, perhaps the alter better alternative is, is is buffing Seal of Command. Right, potentially buffing Seal of Command, right? So that's, you know, uh, but I think even with buffing Seal of Command, you would, uh, you know, uh, kind of buff Seal of Command. Buff Seal of Command, buff Seal of Command, nerf Seal Twisting. Yeah, yeah, you can nerf Seal Twisting. So these are like little little changes, the things that I would be okay with, right? Like, you know, 
I think fundamentally, you know, taking something like, you know, like we said, flying mounts out of the game is something to, that in, in TBC was, it was known for, right? TBC was known for flying mounts. You know, yeah, Paladins came to the Horde side, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I, I definitely do see, you know, some problems. Like, I played a lot in TBC, you know? And one of the main things is that people say that, you know, World PvP takes a big, big hit from flying mounts. I, I did a fuck ton of World PvP in TBC. And I honestly think that flying mounts make a pretty good addition to the game. There are problems with it. But, you know, I mean, and, and talking about, like, you know, okay, you can talk about Druid Flight Form, this and another, but when you're talking about, like, looking at class balance and things like that, like, there's... Only so there are ways of I there are ways of making do. changes. To be fair, there are ways of making changes to flying mounts to make it a lot less deleters to world PvP, and and I would agree with that, right? Like team elevator yeah. aside, as much as that is a cause near and dear to my heart, you know, making it so that like if you mount up, you have like a five second debuff or buff, uh, right? Like unclickable off, right? So debuff that makes it so that if you get hit, you get dismounted, right? That might be something, right? Or having more tools to dismount people properly. Mm-hmm. I think I think maybe that would be an avenue they go to and preserve because obviously not going to add elevators everywhere as much as I wish that they would, you know they won't. But making yeah. it so that that those like you 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 solve the symptoms rather than the problem itself. The problem is flying mounts. Flying mounts are bad, right? Like that. That's just that that honestly like is it, just like a, after the meta gaming that people do and after the meta gaming that you will see, you will see that that's the case. Or at least I hope that you do. But there are ways of solving right, like treating the symptoms instead that can make it a much better experience and preserve the. Right, the uniquity of those flying mounts, right? Like making the five second debuff, allowing Goblin Rock to dismount, allowing uh, a discombobulator ray to dismount people, those kinds of solutions, I think might be the better option than going for, right? Because it is jarring. People do like their dragons. People do like, right, the the ability to fly. People do like, yeah, right, as much as people like, you know, things that are bad for them, right? They they, they do. So Ayo. maybe maybe but, give it to well, them. Maybe give it to them, but 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 right, add let's, a sugar let's, tax. Let's talk right? fly, we'll talk about. Fly, <laughs> we'll fly, get there. He's eager. He's uh, game. Uh, uh, no, I want to say about the class bounds again. Like I think one thing that people don't realize is that you know the the alliance actually is and does have some actually really good racials in PvP that people kind of like you know don't really <clears> notice. I, I I mean perception is huge in in arena. It's it's one of the most powerful racials you can have in arena uh, priests have chastised. Like, I, I don't know. I think people kind of, you know, they, they see Arcane Torn, they say, Oh my God, you know, rain silence. And they think that it's this huge, amazing racial, but I, I, I don't think enough people give the Alliance racials enough credit for PVP. Um, and if people maybe did a little bit more research and looked into it a little bit more, maybe, maybe you would, we wouldn't have such a skew. Fair enough. Like that's so. like, that's not even going to matter though, because if you don't have other people to play with, you know, if you're like, okay, I'm going to go be a unique snowflake, you know, go against the meta and go, you know, Alliance, say that's what it would be. Mm-hmm. Um, it gets to the thing where it's like, people are just going to want to play with more people. Right. And if there's already a huge imbalance going into it, like, yeah, would you rather have people to play with or, you know, yeah. like that's, that's kind of what we're looking at. Cause already like even talking to a lot of friends I have on Alliance, a lot of them want to reroll Horde. A lot of them want to go for it. Really? For, would you? Uh, would you support? Would anyone here support or especially oppose? Um, right, and, and this, this, this I know, like, it does like tickle people in the wrong way. Uh, faction transfers for specifically the side that's up, right? So if it say, it say Scarum, right? They add free faction transfers to so you, Horde. You can only to go only. right. So you can only go to the to the faction that had. La- I I, I think like, I'd be okay with that. I think I would be okay with that. Honestly, I don't, the team I, that um, work. It can't work in classic though because I don't, I don't think any of this. I don't think any of this would really solve any problems to be honest. Because while it's an incentive, you won't end up having people do it. Like we've seen that with the free server transfers. It's either like right. everybody decides to go or everybody doesn't. It's like whatever the meta's decided that's what it's going to be so they may open do the up incentives the need to be more extreme then well right? that's what is i'm it like free flying mounts yeah, for all of alliance no, like, that's, no, like that, that's a, what's the line yeah. that's a good point because yeah, i mean right uh, I, I just let me let me jump in on this one because i think that yeah private servers have dangled out some pretty extreme things like free respects mm-hmm. free flying mounts or whatever to restore the balance now i don't think blizzard would do anything that extreme but 
is there room to move at all for, again, when we talk about tinkering with the numbers, what if all, and this is where I get to, I'd love to wake up one day and all of a sudden, um, you know, something on the alliance side, whatever it is, be it a, not a new alliance racial or something, but numbers are tinkered with where you go, holy fuck, have you seen what they've done with the alliance racials? They're crazy. You know, whether it takes something like that to dangle that cherry in front of people, what do you guys think about that? Like what North was saying. Yeah, give a skate bar to snow cool down. Yeah, no, I agree. It, it makes <laughs> like, I, I, uh, I, I, th- no. I think I think any any conversation needs to start with giving seal of blood to the alliance because otherwise, mm. people are going to want to DPS this horde. Do you think and it's not even? Big, what? No, okay, 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 okay. okay. Seal of hey, blood. Hey, seal hey, of blood is literally so small. It is. It's so yeah, small. So here's my thing. But you know, but you know what? The perception is so much bigger. Right then, but why? Really like red paladins are are a joke. As it's, far just as it's just because. Yeah, it's just because <laughs> I have. It's just because. Oh, you have something. Oh, you've got you've got the rattle, and I don't what? have. Wah. Like that's literally the no, only thing. Me, like, should me, we? Let me tell you. Let me tell you why it is. You guys, I haven't played fucking paladin. I can tell. It makes the class feel so much better to play because they also get a mechanic in TBC where you get mana back when you're healed. So yeah, blood yeah. damages you. So an alliance, you actually it, it feels a lot worse to play a paladin without seal of blood. It just you, you can use less abilities. You tend to have mana problems, all sorts of things. So it's not only the damage of seal of blood. It's kind of like playing a warrior with world buffs. It just kind of feels better. You know, you can use all your abilities all the time. You have much longer longevity. It's better for tanking, even like every. It, it just it just works a lot better with the class. And for people who have played it on both sides, which I have played around with that in TBC, it's just. It's almost like night and day. It's it's way better to. Play I've been, I board. totally get what you're talking about, L. But but, but I'm, what, what I'm trying to say is, is like I, I get what you're saying. It's a lot better. But when you have one spot dedicated to a red paladin in your raid, if it was warlocks, I'd be like, yes, 100 percent, or hunters, right? Well, I mean, it but, is it is warlocks though. Orc warlock. You look at orc warlock. You look at blood fury. Blood fury. It's, yeah. it's, blood fury is good. Blood it's, good. It, 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 I mean, it's right. It is an extra, like a whole extra thing, right? That is the seal of blood. Mm-hmm of the warlock right of the hunter right right, right? Yeah, like but, so yeah, you, you do point. have that that is where the biggest difference lies yeah. when you actually talk about those kinds of racials so i think upping the alliance racials is what you need to talk about right giving you know yes. ma- not 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 giving not not something like giving every man for himself or but you know making drenai yeah. right. a little bit better right like it, it made more sense pre 2.4.3 when alliance had fear ward and horde did not yeah is that something that we like to see return make gift of the naru uh, great again I, I think something cool would be like so. Okay, I I very much think that Seal of Blood should remain Horde, and I think there's a lot of reasons why. But maybe, and and I I'm wondering this has any uh, maybe I'll ask it at the end. But you know maybe giving the Alliance a different I don't know something like like give them Fear Ward. Blood. Fear Ward was their racial. Fear Ward right. was the Alliance racial, right? That well, was the Seal of Blood equivalent yeah, for the priest. But, you know. All priests, so all priests got reworked, right? So it's, you would have to do a lot of work on a priest again, which is too much work. I you think, would have right? to do a lot of work. You literally change I mean, one from you know, zero. What? Undead, undead. Right. Oh, no, undead no, access well, to spell one. Oh, access to spell zero. Okay, blood elf access right, but to no, spell no, no, one. No. So okay, when they to gave zero. when they gave all priests fear ward, right? So they gave all priests other. So they gave dwarfs chastise, right? So because they took fear ward away from them. So you, I don't think you yeah. can have dwarf priests with chastise and fear ward. You know, no, you just, you just you, you, you revert you revert the priest changes. Right. Right. I, remove that, I think that's creating another issue out of another issue. So what I'm saying is, like, you know, you have you have seal of blood, right? And like Melron's saying, it's one you know small issue, uh, but and I understand Al's point because in the whole scheme of things, like it does you know make p- people bitter about playing the alliance. So what if you maybe like I don't know rework slightly reworked their seal system to a small degree or something like that. What I'm trying to say though, is I think at the end of the day, like if you were to give them seal of blood, I don't think it would be that big of a deal. I really don't. I think, okay, I could, I could live with that. I but mean, it's not going to solve blood fury. It's not going to solve will the forsaken. No, it's not no solve... but I think that's one of the bigger issues that people look at and say, this is why we have such a, you know, skew on the alliance. So I think, what, you know, what, just Paladin? giving them- You think Seal of Blood, wait, you think Seal of Blood is a bigger deal? I don't, no, I don't think it's a big Wodin? deal. I think people think it's a big deal. Yeah, yeah no, we'll move saying. on after this one, I, guys. I, Yeah, yeah. All right, guys. That is- uh, North, you good? Did I get it in? Get it in? No, no, I, I, I think I think that I think that people are 
hopefully smarter than that right given how much we we, we've already said that yes it's low impact yes people still care about it because it's like you know he has got a candy bar and i don't right people still think that way the exact same way about the racials right people think that way about what if people think that way about you know about blood fury especially in pvp or in pve they think that way about blood fury in pvp they think about what if what if is fantastic right rmp you want you know undead in every role you want undead priest you want undead rogue you want undead mage just because fear is you know so strong against that comp i understand that no, i understand that what i'm saying though northen is like i'm not saying i agree to this what i'm saying is that the player base has a bigger issue for whatever reason with seal of blood than anything else right i mean that, that's I, that's been I, evident i don't I, I, how is that i hear evident? more people complain complain about seal of blood than any any other racial I do hear it a in, bit, but, but we'll series. move on, guys. Really? North, More North, than yeah. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Yes. I'll have to move yeah. on or, or we'll, uh, we'll we'll run out of time for sure, guys. I, I'm liking the spiciness, though. Please do not stop with the spiciness. <laughs> it's very good. Look, uh, Mad Season, I'm going to throw it over to you, mate, because I want to hear what your opinion is on something that is somewhat similar because, again, we're talking about populations. But, you know, a, a lot of – I've hammered this home so many times, as you have, guys, but – all the problems that if people have any problems with classic, they generally originate from the server population sizes and these mega servers that we got. Um, people talk about, you know, the toxic PVP culture, the, um, you know, the economy effects and blah, 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 blah. It all started. That's your genesis there. Moving into TBC, do you actually expect any kind of change from Blizzard on this? I mean, I guess they're just going to progress. I can, let's presume, I mean, not necessarily presume, that we all progress onto a TBC server and, and you know, mm-hmm. characters move forward as is. You, they're not just going to necessarily divide people up. But what are your thoughts on these mega servers in TBC, given the, the shit fight that Outland might turn into? Uh, well, it's it's really something that's tied to the community at the end of the day. Just like in classic, like the the PvP community is going to be the PvP community. There's nothing you could really do to change that realistically. It's I think that's just more of something with the player base. But uh, I guess like in regards to changes, like I don't know, like what change would you make to uh, you know other than like faction balance to make sure that servers are more balanced like faction wise and stuff. Um, I think not to state the obvious here, but what about that meme? Why not both? How would you guys think of classic? I think it launched with what? 40 servers. What if it launched 20 servers of no changes like we have now and 20 other servers with bigger changes? Yeah. Uh, Specifically regarding like VC, like you could have a server where me and Meldron would be on where it's, it's, no changes and, and you can have a server <laughs> yeah and if can or you could you can have a server where instead of kill as is the final boss it's just a series of elevators for north and ale right? yeah. <laughs> um, problem with that I, is I think, the player base though yeah but it would still be the That's, same amount of servers like so yeah. instead of 40 servers on classic it would be 20 True. classic servers, 20 True. classic yeah. plus servers with uh an alternate rule set and then you know if so, if players want seal of blood on alliance and horde or you know they want the the racials to be balanced then you know they have the option for that so it'd be like fairlina or fairlina plus i guess um but getting back to the question of as far as like how to affect the community you brought up the toxic pvp community and server imbalance i don't know man it's like i i can't think of anything off the top of my head that blizzard could release that could really change the the behavior of the community i think that's just that's up to us as players right fair enough willie welcome i'm so sorry mate i think nope. i fucked up the hey, timing willie. there can you hear us mate that's all right yeah, willie, willie we can't hear you if you're trying to talk we'll, we'll sort it out real soon guys um piggybacking off of mad season's opening stanza there um ale mate I'll, I'll throw it over to you again because i know uh again time poor what do you feel? I mean, I feel like we can't really do much about the population sizes at this point, right? Like we've, if you start with it, that's kind of, it is as it is, unless something is found to, again, dangle cherries out in front of people to move servers. What do you feel about how things will go in TBC with the way things are? I think it'll just kind of progressively get worse. Like if, if they just move directly into TBC, I think more people will end up coming aboard than will go Alliance. And because the server is already so horde dominated in a PvP sense, like I first see just like insane queues for battlegrounds. You know, it's hard. The good thing is that arenas you can play both faction, but you know, for like 
battlegrounds and things like that, I think it's going to be really bad. Whether that will affect people in general, like, could the queues get bad enough that it'll cause people to swap faction? I mean, that's that's the only thing I can really think of, unless they really do something extreme and you know have new servers and people transfer in and try to control it beforehand. I I just I just kind of see it getting worse, to be honest. I think that's the way to do it to have new servers to try to get people into because. I, I do see some issues with that, though, right? Like names, like for instance, like if you have four people from four different realms with all of the name Melderon, right? Who's going to get, mm-hmm. who's going to be, you would have to have that thing where they did where they had everyone, you know, pick their names beforehand. But I think that would be a good move to have new servers. Uh, you, so let them, you, let them, you let them duke it out in Garibashi. Yeah, it's like right, Highlander. Right, they exactly, can only be one. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you deposit them all in Garibashi. Whoever last man standing, right, gets the name. Yeah, I mean, pretty much, right? But, like, that. other than that, and, and, and then, you know, trying to regulate how much Horde versus Alliance are on those servers by either queues or just saying, you know, the Horde's capped out right now at 70%. You can't go anymore. That's the only way that we're going to be able to fix this issue is if we have new servers to go into – that have that you know option i mean does anybody else can anybody else have anything big shout out to willie willie welcome to the, thanks this. for joining oh, Just to hey mate how I are you yeah sorry i thought we were starting in like 10 minutes no no that's probably <laughs> my mistake i've been going for a, a while already i'm so sorry mate I, I i work around like 15 time zones and i might have gotten it off by an hour i'm so sorry yeah no so it's my bad i should have logged in earlier to uh check anyway all What's good, up, man. Uh, so you, you haven't missed good, too good. much, Willie. We've just hit on the easy stuff first. We're going to get into the more specific nitty-gritty stuff very soon. We're just talking, uh, you know, server population sizes and the issues they may cause for TBC. Does anyone else have anything much more on this? Because I've got a lot more to get to, guys. So let me know if, if we've pretty much covered it or if there's one more thing to go on about here. I think the one thing worth mentioning is that I, I really, even if they introduce servers like that, I don't think people will take the devil they, you know, the the devil you know, right? Like people will stick with the devil they know rather than the devil they don't, right? The, the, the odds that they get stuck on a server that, you know, is completely, you know, bricked versus mm-hmm. what they know, right? Like, you know, Onslaught's going to stay on Scarum, you know, no matter what, because they, right, they have control. It's comfortable where, right, they currently are. They're not going to risk anything. Right. People aren't going to risk coming off the big servers. So even if you introduce the servers, if you're not making fresh servers, if you're not making alternative rule sets, if you're not making a real enticing reason to actually transfer the servers, it's, it's, it's going to do nothing. I will say, Josh, I think we need to have uh, smaller, more servers and smaller servers. I think that smaller communities, you know, get rid of hopefully potentially the layering issue. Uh, I mean, it is going to be a clusterfuck going into like Hellfire Peninsula, you know, day one, but oh, yeah. that's the way it was. And there's not much. 20 layers, people <laughs> dance. I do agree. Yeah, I don't know if I'm you guys. Layering. Yeah, I don't know if you guys have mucked around much on other servers outside your main server, but I can tell you that I played a bit on a PVE server, the Oceanic PVE server, Mm. and it was obviously a much smaller population, but fuck me, it felt weirdly good like it felt like it did back in the day it actually felt like i was back in 2006 logging on i was like yeah that's what stormwind actually looked like that's about the (laughs) right amount of people and then you go out in the world sure you wouldn't see as many people out there but it's not like you didn't see anyone it was a ghost town and and you'd still get groups for dungeons and everything it just it wasn't crazy and i've never really seen the one comment on reddit with someone going fucking how good are these twenty thousand four servers it is like <laughs> heaven i've just never yeah. seen that comment because and, we all said it before they came out dude like not we all but a lot of people were like do the private server populations it's so cool when ten thousand people log yeah. in at the same time i haven't fucking heard from those people in the last year and you know what josh people are so <laughs> much fucking nicer when it's a smaller server because people remember you and fucking call you out on your shit if you're an mm-hmm. asshole that's why a hundred percent, one hundred percent. All right, guys. Look, Willie. Well, well, what, what oh, about sorry. what about what about the assholes in the world? How does that? Right, are you treating me unfairly? I mean, we're just going to treat you like an asshole for the rest of the, for the rest of your life. Whoa, That's whoa, whoa! I don't want to have repercussions to my actions. <laughs> I know. Oh, come on, man. Yeah, I, like, I don't want accountability. I'm playing online so I can be unaccountable. Damn it! <laughs> That's why the game's so good. Discord for that now, Tim. You can uh, ninja anything gets put on the Discord. It's there forever. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Willie, mate, let's get you to kick off this next one. Um, and 
you know, it's something about, you know, you've actually talked out about this a fair bit on your videos. Um, and that is, I, I mentioned this at the top of the call, whether or not it would be the right thing to do for TBC Classic if we actually tinkered with the classes. And you've, I, I always have your, your sultry voice and your exact words ringing through my head because I believe you said this uh, on a video of yours and then repeated it when we first had you on the podcast because you talked about – the fact what that you mean. yeah, the fact that this doesn't need to be balanced, but a great thing to have is active balancing. Active balancing doesn't mean perfect balance. MMOs shouldn't necessarily have perfect balancing, as you've said, but just active yeah. balancing on the part of the devs. I am of the opinion that I would love to open up TBC and not have everything worked out and have a few surprises in there. And I'm not saying new abilities. I'm just saying fuck with a few of the coefficients or something. How do you feel about tinkering with the classes in TBC? I think after seeing, especially with how it's gone with classic, where, you know, we've got some classes which are they're pretty clearly out of whack, like majors, for instance. Um, who whoa, didn't even whoa, have instant whoa. cast arcane explosion until like the final patch of classic, for example. Um, yeah. It's pretty much going to repeat itself, um, especially if we launch in a later patch, which I don't know if you've talked about yet. Um, but yeah, like you say, it's not the case where to balance the class, you have to be like, well, you know, paladins need divine storm or something, but I don't know if the, if the coefficients were changed, you know, they got more AP from something just additional spell damage bonuses, it, it could change up quite significantly. Um, it's just thinking back to in the past as well, in other expansions, I always sort of looked forward to trying out changes whenever they did happen. Like in Wrath of the Lich King, people would re-roll all the time. It was easier mm-hmm. to gear then, given, but it was something to look forward to. So I don't think it'd necessarily be a bad thing, but yeah, it, it could be something to think about. I don't know, what do you guys reckon? I just I thought of a good idea. Here. Go ahead, well, yeah. I'm going first. You should not. No, go, go, go. go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. How, how many people have you heard complain with the hunter changes they put on the BTR? None. <clears throat> Zero. None, right? Yeah. None. Yeah. And so the, the thing that people forget is that, which I'm glad you reminded, Willie, is that throughout TBC, there were changes all the way through where they were balancing, mm-hmm. fixing things, you know, uh, for example, adding. Uh, dots into resilience, stuff like that, which did change the meta all the way through TBC. I think people wouldn't necessarily mind it as long as it wasn't like nerfs. Like if there was, you know, small buffs here and there, like as with the hunter changes, nobody, I haven't heard anybody say a bad thing about it. It's like people like, yeah, you know what? Hunters actually do need a little bit, a little bit of love in classic. And, yes. and, no, and nobody, I, I haven't heard a bad thing about it at all. I think as long as they but- don't go necessarily nerfing things because i think that will make people you know people are less receptive to nerfs as they are to like buffs. right here's 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 but, the here's the issue though with tbc right is that we, especially with like a more limited roster with only 25 people especially transitioning over as we have to from 40 man rosters especially when you have all these mages and all these warriors right as well having like moving down to those smaller rosters and then buffing potentially like classes like ret paladin if you buff ret paladin ret paladin comes with a lot of utility a lot of utility you go ahead and start yeah. buffing red paladins you start buffing enhancement shamans you start buffing elemental shamans why would you bring right like it's already it's already hard enough for the fury warriors and the arcane mages of the world yeah. right when they have their niche spots right it, it, the balance <laughs> is is perilous right so it, that, it is yeah. and and there's something to be it's said there's something to be said it is always perilous but there's something to be said for passive balancing Right. Starcraft so, so, yeah. is a very famous game in this example, for instance. It was thought of, you know, it is a very famous example. It was thought that it was impossible, basically, to win in a professional setting, uh, you know, as Protoss versus Zerg. And then after years, right, Beasts who standardized <laughs> the Protoss fast expand versus Zerg, and it completely flipped the meta on its head after after being the same way forever, right? There are enough right. tools that, like, right, like, it isn't metagame to the point where it is insane, right? You don't have as many world buffs, right? There still is a question of, right, there still is so much mystery in terms of, because TPC hasn't been played nearly to death as much as vanilla on private servers, right? And, and to the extent of, you know, what are these comps going to look like? What are these raids going to look like? What are not, not, not as much PvP, right? Because PvP is, you know, more or less explored, but, well, but in terms of the PvE metas right like those are going to be right are people running to shadow priests are you running to arcane mages can you do that in 2.4.3 gear is that going to make more sense with the spirit changes that are made right and if you have if, if there's small changes right 
even if they're small changes, those buffs might potentially throw that completely out of whack because right now you still bring almost every class to a TBC raid, and I think that's a good thing. Well, the thing yeah. is, North, I think one, I think the main thing we have to look at here, and, and like, okay, when you looked at TBC when it first came out from 2.1, 2.0 whatever, to 2.4.3, you know, the metas in PvP did change. I mean, slightly oh, sometimes, oh, sure, but, they, sure, but they, sure. They, they changed a lot, right? So, like, and, and I think one of the biggest issues, and I think Al and William, this is what I wanted to say, is, like, they're, mm-hmm. they're kind of onto something here, right? Because one of the biggest problems with TBC and with any legacy server is the stagnant, is the stagnant, the stagnancy, whatever the fuck the word is, right? The stagnant uh, of the of the of the how the game is, right? And I think one of the most amazing things why a lot of people want to have uh, a two point one, you know, an active live TBC is because things change over time. Even though there were bugs and things that got fixed, you know, but I don't think I don't think we should redo that, right? I don't think we should redo two point one to two point two to two point three to two point four point three, whatever, and, and have that progression. But if we were able to somehow have a progression of you know so so, say we started from how it was in 2.4.3 and do minor minor fucking changes right i mean things that are so minor to the point where it's not going to really change the meta but it is it might spice things up a little bit right if it's not going to change the meta right if if it's not going to change the meta it's not going to actually spice things up yeah then right even minor changes will change the meta right if you sit there and you sprinkle three grains of salt instead of two you're not going to notice that much of a difference even though right at the micro level it's 50 percent more it's still one extra grain of salt. Well, well then, so convenient. maybe it will change the meta, the meta a little bit, right? But it, it might not change. What I think is what we should focus on is maybe changing a little bit more in PvP and not in PvE, right? Because I think if we start to fuck with balancing in PvE, then there's a a lot more uh, of a. But if I, we can, well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Part of part of what people really enjoyed in TBC and part of what people enjoyed in the earlier versions of World of Warcraft is that PvP and PvE are grossly interrelated compared to ver- later are. versions of it the does. game. Yeah, Absolutely. So it's really, really I'll, challenging I'll, I'll to actually one balance them. one without balancing the other. Well, Will, Willie, it, it, sorry, sorry, guys. True. Willie, oh. Willie, go for it. Yeah, I was just saying that's, that's true as well, definitely. Um, there's no PvP talents, there's no separation or, yeah. or different honor systems or anything, so you can try as you want to balance something in pv but it will always affect pvp Mad. Um, oh, whether or not that's a good thing as well because for example launching on 2.43 um two years of rmps coming right your way yeah, yeah. exactly that's my issue right mm-hmm. and that's you know that's <clears throat> what i wanted to see if we could change that but i i i don't know if it's the right thing to do is a star from 2.1 or is it, you know, well, I don't know. Piggybacking off of that def camp, Matt, if I can throw it over to you, because that was the next topic I was going to bring up and you've weaved it in there beautifully def camp. Cause it probably does, you know, these topics aren't necessarily mutually exclusive. When we talk about whether or not we're going to fuck with the meta or fuck with classes and things like that, then obviously the conversation leads to this progressive versus 2.4.3 uh, stasis argument, mm-hmm. mad season, which side of the fence do you lie on? If, if let's say the classes, weren't let's say nothing was changed but you do have that option there of well we could just go the historical changes that we made through the actual patches do you want to do that or do you think just go the classic route and put us in the last patch Uh, i'm definitely uh progressive in my opinion i was very vocal about this even back before classic launched during like when the demo came out is i don't really like care about balance so much as in making like a change that wasn't introduced back in burning crusade to make okay let's catch up you know for instance for classic let's tune down fury warriors let's tune up um red paladins and pve or something but more of just with the changes that happened back in the original day because willie and um def cam said it already the the biggest issue with the game is stagnation and anything you can do to combat that is is ultra valuable so should you should should they make changes on top of that though like will like are you for the active balancing when the problems inevitably arise because if we go 2.1 um, if we go to 2.1 like i will not find a raid spot i will be outside yeah. making tables and yeah. buffing arcane intellect yeah, yeah but that's just because you're an asshole <laughs> i mean i mean yes yes but right when you look at like for instance the 2.4 point uh three changes to not only like gear like later on like the 2.1 changes to gear and you look at um right like the state of arcane mage for instance in in, in 2.4 compared to 2.1 you have an actual change that not a lot of people pick up on it's that when you have more intellect in 2.4.3, your spirit regen increases. That's the only patch where that ever happened. Yeah. And Wasn't it's the Frost only thing. 
I mean, right, but it, it, it right, it's not a warlock, right? And it's not a I warlock that stacks better, still, right? Like I people, mean, the, yeah. It's it's yeah. no, but it's it, like in two point one, it, it it's okay, but it's it's not. It's it's by no stretch of the imagination good compared yeah. to other things, right? So right, people will right. start, and 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 when people endlessly meta game, it's like, oh well, you don't need it to complete the content. That's true, but when people inevitably start to min max because that's something that, and we have to we have to count for that reality, right? Mm-hmm. They will stop bringing mages to raid. So so, but that's not necessarily the end all be all, right? Are you guys in support there then, right? for a change right buff the mage job right make it more right maybe give back the 2.4.3 change of the intellect spirit regen right or maybe you right. know something smaller to make sure that That's, they keep mages in raid right. or make it so that if you zone in to a raid you know it wipes your buff so that you can't just have people buffing outside right are those right. the types of changes that we want to see to prevent this kind of class stacking because i think class stacking is a big issue in tbc oh yeah oh, especially absolutely. if we go the 2.1 progressive you guys got to read the patch notes, right? So yeah. the thing is, it's like, I, I progressive sounds good, but then read all the patch notes, right? They reverted so many things that they oh, changed wow. previously. And I'm just saying, like... Yeah, do we want world buffs? If we're launching on 2.0, we're, we're going to launch yeah. world buffs, yeah, world right? Buffs. <laughs> what, what, what you're asking, <laughs> number, like, these aren't the people who made the game that work for Blizzard now, right? And I'm just saying, I'm not saying that they're not good people. They're not talented. I think... I think they are. I'm just saying they're not the people who they design have, this. Game. They don't have as many people either. And I'm just like really worried about like you know if we do certain things. What's the lesser of two evils? That's what I'm getting at. Do we All want right. to stagnate 2.4.3 that at least people know that that will they know like you said North, or do you want to go back and forth to where oh you, well now you were powerful for a month and now you're not powerful anymore. Well, like, it's, and it relies yeah, I, it relies on trusting those devs to actively balance, and then that's why I asked yeah. the question, right? And that's because the it, it does rely on them actively balancing and having a much, in my opinion, it relies on them having a bigger team than they currently do. Yeah, it and it would, it would also better. need a course correction in terms of involvement, whether or not the word be from on high in Blizzard is to the classic team, do not fucking touch much. Just put on, put yourselves on cruise control and just manage yeah. this game rather than develop it. Because like Meldron, like you're saying, you know, obviously. We've met a bunch of these guys. It's not like they're fucking evil people. They're great people. They're fucking smart. They're great. They love classic. But, you know, we see not a lot of things get done at times. And we wonder if that's yeah. because the hands are tired. Because it's just like classic runs itself. It's already been built. Just fucking do whatever. Right. Yeah. But yeah, there's still you know, bots in every, like, like, yeah, ten, yeah, ten yeah. Bots in every fucking 10 feet you go. But I think <laughs> one thing that, you know, I, I really, I've always been a pretty big advocate of the patch progression as well. But, and I do totally 100% realize the issues that that brings. A lot of people don't like the gear changing, but I think you know having shit, shittier gear in in the beginning of TBC will be a good thing. It would be make raids more challenging. I know people don't like you know, gear sets changing this that, and the other. Exactly. There are some Private really but, there's some really uh, weird think, examples though. I like think, when you get down to it, like, no, there are, like there's a necklace. There's, there's a necklace I, off Tidewalker yeah. that in patch 2.1 is literally this no, for Arcane Mage. Right. And then in 2.0, or sorry, in 2.0, and 2.1, it's changed to a neck that sometimes makes makes you immune to silence effects. Go for a death well, game. Like, and and that, that, that's like across I, the board. There are a lot of think, a lot of really bizarre things. I yeah. think there's a I think there's a good go-between though, right? So there's a good, you know, we can say, okay, we don't want world buffs in any iteration of the game, right? But we do want to see, you know, potentially the, the classes themselves. Change right instead right. of and having the world like a, multi, a multimodal like that's not gonna, never going to they're not going to pick and choose things out of different. No, well, like, well, I mean, I, I listen. They so, so pro, a lot of private servers, you know, d- they didn't do the patch progression, but they did like the item itemization progression, right? So that's one thing that they could do, do the itemization change, right? So where you know you're not getting the crazy fucking end all be all, you know, two point four point three items that you're getting. In when Kara first came out, because when Kara first came out, the gear was pretty much dog shit. All the blues that came out, they were horrible, right? But I mean, that was some of the best gear that was available at the time, other other than you know doing gruels and and you know all the, you know what what I'm saying is it makes for the you know progression that you're going through a little bit tougher, a little yeah. bit harder. I think it's wrong to say that that right like that they're not picking and choosing from patches. We have sat on one one point one three and Nax isn't out on launch. Right, yeah, that originally yeah. wasn't a plan for them. Right, like you know you actually have the raids released progressively. Right, like they they've added other things. Right, so it's not completely out of the realm of possibilities for them to pick and choose from patches because that's what they already do. And I think a really great example and and I'm curious if Josh had a question about this. 
because it feels very pertinent to this discussion particularly is right should hygel be out on release well yeah because well let's, if, let's if go there now because 0, i was gonna ask even, about the even phases. Yeah. yeah even if it's 2.0 right if it's 2.0 hygel was out on release exactly. in 2.0 no one did it right but i i expect i expect i fully expect them to not allow yeah. hygel on release there's no yeah, way that they do that and that would be them nice. picking yeah. and choosing which quests are in the game on different patches and having a franken patch Ale, and Ale. i think they should embrace that if i can throw it over to you ale and just go north thank you so much for bringing that up because that's absolutely on my list um a lot of people getting very spicy about the phases because this was a thing with classic blizzard initially came out with this weird phase plan everyone fucking shat their pants and said you can't do that and they changed it thankfully <laughs> now a lot of people what i'm seeing with tbc is actually a few more varying opinions there's there's not like one plan that everyone goes oh yeah that's absolutely what they should do for tbc there seems to be a lot of back and forth on what it could be ale how do you feel about it i think it has to be different uh they can't have hydro right away because that's yeah. that's just going to be hell because the limiting factor there was uh each end boss only dropped one of the quest material and you needed two, so it would take like you know twenty five weeks to queue ever to key everybody. I think, I think it was. I think they dropped it. Dropped a random number. It was like two to five. But yeah, no, it it, it was one. Yeah, I'm it was pretty sure it was one, one, right? Yeah, I read one, and they up to um black yeah. temple was they, released. They did. They did. I, I did. I did it. I did it in TBC. So it was one, and then it was changed yeah. to four. Yeah. And if they do that, yeah, like I think patch two point one, it was changed to four. Black temple. I, yeah, I think you're right. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, need, like, yeah. like that—that would be hell. Like, the, the Uber guilds will like, are you gonna make them run like ten different splits. Like, they will do that, you know, to mm-hmm. to keep everybody oh, yeah. up to be the first to do it and stuff like that. And I, I just think that's like, it just limits so much of the player base from being able to do it that they should just do a step Absolutely. system where, you know, basically, I, I think they should come up with a plan and then the community discusses it like they did before. And then a general overall right. consensus. But mm-hmm. as, as, far, as far as I know, don't release Hydral right away with the four. Have the tiers be separate. Willie, can I throw it to you, mate? What's your thought on phases? Mm-hmm. Is, there, is there a Willie plan? There is, sort of. Well, I think one of the biggest mistakes possible would be releasing too much on launch um, out of anything Blizzard could do. I don't even think there should be tier five on launch, uh, if I'm Same. honest. Yep. Um, the what content the... that's put in at the start, insofar as the heroic sort of previous phase and tier four, should be able to sort of stand and exist for a while. So otherwise, there'll be it'll be there'll be that on top of clearing tier five, and it'll, it'll well within about two weeks there'll be a lot a lot of guilds going through pretty much all the content. Not only does it invalidate tier four pretty fast, as well as just skip the whole previous phase. Um, but it just rushes through two areas of content and doubles up on the amount of stuff you have to farm each week. And I think it'll be, it'll cause quite a lot of burnout as well. I 100% uh, agree with you there, dude. Well, here, yeah. wait, wait, yeah. here's, here's the problem with even, even later versions of that, right? You, 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 right. You talk about like having later versions of the content. The content is still incredibly relevant. Even as you get into, even as you get into tier six, tier six, you can't enter tier six if, if we're working with like, like pre Hygel stuff, you can't enter it without killing Vash and KT. Right, well, and you I mean, can't extend okay. lockouts. Yeah. You can't extend they lockouts. You you can't six. skip them. Yeah, they they they, they didn't remove they, it by tier six. They removed it. In, oh, sorry, but like, in, 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 in yeah, Sunwell, yeah, right? So I mean, if and a lot of people, right? A lot of people have the mindset that if if you remove that, it it is in fact like like a really bad thing to remove because people don't actually have to see the content, especially the harder bosses of that tier five, right? So you know, I, I'm I'm. Uh, Mad. I'm not I mean, sure. Yeah. I'm not sure that releasing. I'm not sure, but like from a logistical point of view, I'm not sure that releasing Karazhan and two one boss raids is actually a good thing, especially when you have all the trials of the Naru. You have those attunements that 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 are very impactful and very iconic in TBC, yeah. and then this progression of going through tier five and like being able to have all this content to devour on launch, and then the other tiers standing on their own. Right? Hygel does. Hygel and BT are fantastic. Like are a fantastic tier unto themselves. It's two big raids right like in addition to the earlier content that you still need to clear when you move into sunwell right you've got zolomon on the side so it's not like you're it's not like you're starving for content there it really is like there is a lot to do at any stage i think that it's potentially a problem though if you if you remove tier five because for the hardcore players there's really not a lot to do and i guess you don't really need to cater them as much but 
you know, even for the casuals, there's not even as much to look forward to because on 2.4.3 or on any version of this game, Grohl, Mag, and Kara are not going to be hard at all. It all depends on how long you time gate it, right? So if you time gate tier five and, and have only tier four available for, say, what, a month, right? In the first month and then time gate, you know, tier five right after that just to give a little breathing space. You know what I mean? Like, I'd be okay with Tier 5 being out, you know, with SSC. Like, but I think I think we all agree that the, the, the content needs to be time-gated, right? It needs to yeah. be time-gated. But how to do it, that's the issue, right? So, like, either way, it would be very bad to see all the content come out the way it did, you know, in TBC, because obviously we're not in TBC anymore. The thing, things are going to happen, like Al said, you know, you're going to get gills in there and you're going to have 1% of the player base. What are you actually accomplishing? Or, or right? less like, than what 1% you, of the player base. You're, what you're what, accomplishing is, is you're, is you're uh, trying to basically reserve the the uh, the foundation of the, of, the, of the content. I mean, like, the thing that we don't want to happen is to have the content to be over in in three four months right to, to, to be doing tier six you know in a matter of fucking uh, uh months right like that's that's the thing right i think we need to try to preserve the timeline to more the way it was to how guilds were doing it closer to that not saying exactly like that but closer to how it felt in tbc with is the real solution into- is the real solution there I, i'm curious do you think yeah. that a better solution would be Right. Instead, making that content more challenging so that like my guild, for instance, we didn't make it to tier six Ooh, until we're getting there. because we we're couldn't there. kill. Yeah. We couldn't kill Vashon KT. Put a pin in that one, guys. Put a pin in that one because I want to talk about I want to talk about the difficulty soon. Absolutely. North will will pick up from where you left off there soon. Let's wind up on the phases just for now. Willie, you were going to pipe up and and then I want to finish with Mad. Willie, what were you going to say just before? Just one more thing about the phases is you can delay something but you can't take it back right think about phase two uh they released open world pvp turns out that was a whoopsie with the way players interacted with it and then battlegrounds mm-hmm. came out one <laughs> month later instead of two yeah um so yeah you can't take content away once it's already out but it's like you a haircut can release it earlier good point you can, they can take it off you can't put it artificially back on. limiting right like like it, it preserves it like it does preserve it but it's preserving it in an artificial way when so much of what is actually appealing about TBC, in my mind anyway, and I think in the mind of a lot of people who, who at least play TBC private services, how much there is to do on launch. Because if you run through, and the only thing is, is because you're, we're seeing at level 60, we're not even grinding from level one, right? It, it, it'll take us, you know, a day or two, you know, uh, maybe not for more casual players, yeah, but it's going to take you a couple down. of weeks maybe <laughs> to get to get to level to get to level 70. So but say it even takes you a few weeks. It's going to take you, you know, maybe a week for, for your tomb into Karazhan. And then after your tomb into Karazhan, there's nothing else. It'll take uh, a lot of, it'll take a lot of, you, go, you, go, of you clear the content, 70. you clear the content mm-hmm. and that's it, right? You go to mags and KT, which don't, so you go to mags and, and, and Grohl, which don't require Girl, yeah. any additional, like any attunement at all. You can walk in there at the beginning and given the difficulty tuning, right? Which I think this is, and I'll, I'll save this for later, but you know, given the difficulty tuning as it is currently, people are just going to walk in there. They're going to walk into Grohl before they walk into Karazhan because yeah. there's no attunement required. They're just going to kill it right at level like 68 right like if they could you know because it's not going to yeah. be difficult mad mad all. i want to throw it over to you to tie this one off and then we'll get on to the difficulty so north uh tee up your big difficulty point because i, w- I definitely want to touch on that but um mad season you obviously have a you know a lot of youtube followers mate people absolutely love your work and your words hold a lot of sway you know you, you might be touching on this in a video coming up or a little bit later down the track you know i asked willie the same question is there a mad season plan for phases or has anything you've heard over the last 10 or uh, 10 odd minutes changed your mind well i appreciate it but honestly like you guys are bigger experts on bc than me i i played bc casually i'm like full classic guys but i can weigh in on here still um one of the the two big issues with classic right now that go hand in hand are the speed at which players clear through these raids, obviously and also the difficulty because they're so easy today they get cleared through very, very quickly. But in BC, you now have a choice in regards to these faces and, you know, holding back on these raids. Like, uh, and I don't know, we might have to wait until the beta servers come out to really see, but like how powerful do you think, like how, how far do you think players would be able to progress if they released high gel on the release of BC, you know, taking into account attunements and stuff? Um, <clears throat> I think in general, BC will be more difficult. I think the skill gap between 
we see in now is much smaller than what it is in classic. But, you know, is, is that underestimating the player base? So you have the option of holding off on these raids. And then you have the issue of players uh, clearing all of the content right away, right? Or you could release all of the raids and potentially have uh, some form of progression because players will just run into a brick wall in, in form of gear checks and and uh, what have you. So Hydral would be cleared within the week. Right. You think so? On that Even with the Hydral, Hydral would be well, maybe not cleared, but Hydral would be entered at the at the end of that week. A hundred percent. Yeah, and Rage Winter Chill, Rage Winter Chill would die. Everything else up in the air, but well, Rage Winter actually, Chill would be dead. There's actually there's actually proof of that because TBC was delayed uh, into entering China for a long time. I think they had to work on whatever it is they have to do to get the game in China, yeah. and so they actually didn't release the game into China until the 2.1 patch had already released. So they released TBC in China with Black Temple out, and guilds cleared that. In under a month. Wow. Uh, there's that, there's that, screenshots. Hmm. And the, and the, and the yeah. crazy thing about this, you should actually look into this, be good video topic. Um, there's huh. screenshots of Black Temple kills, and a lot of the players still have tier three gear on because they just wow. didn't have time to upgrade it. Hmm. And they were just. <laughs> They just, be, yeah, that's actually such a good point. They just point because, ripped yeah. through all the content and killed Illidan. Yeah. And every, everybody, I remember at the time, was just like, holy crap. Like, yeah, they're yeah. still in tier you, three. You, like, what? This is yeah. crazy. <laughs> You well, don't need Prebus. Yeah. You yeah. don't need Prebus to, to mess with, right? Like, you don't need Prebus because, you know, some of that stuff is better than tier four stuff, especially if you're going off oh, of, yeah. uh, and this is one of the, another one of the problems with launching in 2.0 or launching in, you know, early patch because, you know, I, I'm just going to be rocking Frostfire gear until Kingdom Come, right? Like, I, I'll we'll walk into Grohl at level, if we could walk into Grohl at level 65, right? Barring, barring the hit percentages, right? But obviously, you walk in as fresh 70s, full tier three, you know, mm -hmm. that content is dead. Right in, yeah. a, in a flash, right? You're, you're going through Hydro. I would be surprised if anything other than Archimond stayed alive in the first week if we if if they release with Hydro out. North, That's I, I want to off private servers. Yeah. North, I want to start off with you on the topic of difficulty because you obviously touched on it and danced around, around it a bit in your last few answers. And um, mate, guys, I just want to say to everyone, you're all doing such a fantastic job. I am loving this. It's a slightly different format for Countdown. We've got a lot of guests here. It's a bit more like a Meet the Press episode, but um, I'm really enjoying it. And obviously. Coming with that, a lot of people are going to kind of talk over each other. It's a bit of a mess at times, but we're doing really well, guys. But uh, And I love that North getting heckled in chat as well, but obviously with, with a bit of love too, so it's all good. North, mate, let me, let me start with this. Um, so many people talk about the difficulty of TBC and what we could do versus what happened with Classic. Now, the fool's folly seems to be to simply suggest upping the HP of bosses. Now, when I say fool's folly, I mean, that's the kind of thing that I was like, why can't we just give them bigger health pools? And everyone kind of sort of seems to reply, well, all that does is just add a bit of time onto the fight. And I kind of go, well, you know, isn't that the point? Then we get to see more, more phases of, of certain fights but um tell me why that might be a bit of an error just to simply buff a boss's hp and what else could be done in terms of difficulty just 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 to start off as well josh knows how to shut me up so if he wanted me quiet i would be quiet a b that, that is true um B. Uh, I think that I think that's a fantastic question i think the problem is especially when you look at um if you look at like tier five as a case study um or tier four as a case study Adding more HP to these bosses won't make the other mechanics feel more meaningful when you can just ignore them because of the lack of damage going out, because of the amount of healing throughput that you're going to be able to do even in tier three gear, even even if, even if it were tier two point five gear, even in tier two, the amount of stuff that you could do there because of how those items were, you know, were actually. And I'll wind up part one of that call right there, everyone. So please do tune in next week for the thrilling conclusion to that epic chat we're only halfway through it and there's more good stuff to come so be sure to check that out it really is fantastic to hear from all of them and i can't thank everyone enough for listening in to the return of countdown and it's been so great to bring this all to you and also thanks to all of the callers for being here for this first episode if you would like to be a part of this community show then please do hit me up you can find me on the show's discord the 
links are in the show notes. Hit me up at the TBC subreddit. There's a lot of you who are going to be listening to this. I'm one of the moderators there. Please send me a DM. Tell me you want to come on and talk about a particular class or a particular issue, and we will organize something. So please, everyone, this is for community involvement. It works best when we get as many of you as we can, as you've just heard. So I look forward to bringing you more and more Countdown to Crusade. The show won't necessarily be weekly, but I'll do my best and we'll see how we go. But it's been a pleasure bringing you this, and I'll see you next time.